Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we're gonna be going over how you can set up the rescheduling functionality. So this is a custom function within Make that we're gonna be building out. It's connected directly to Cal, and it's one of the key functionalities in my opinion, because yes, you can book appointments. Yes, you can check availability, but another key feature of receptionist is the ability to reschedule appointments. And so it's super simple. First, I'm gonna show you a demo showing that it works. So I have my calendar right here. This is for this Thursday at 7 p.m. So we're gonna call in and we're gonna try and reschedule to Friday where I have nothing going on. I'm gonna call it now and we're just gonna test it out. Hello? Hey there, how's it going? What can I help you with today? Hey, I'm just looking to reschedule my appointment. Got it, let's get that rescheduled for you. First, can you share your email with me so I can pull up your appointment details? Yeah, it's kevin at targetdial.co. Thanks, Kevin. Just to confirm, your email is kevin at targetdial, right? No, targetdial.co. Got it. So your email is kevin at targetdial.co, right? Just want to make sure I've got it correct. Yep, that's it. Perfect. Thanks for confirming. When would you like to reschedule your appointment to? Let me know a time that works best for you. Could we do Friday? Sure thing. Do you have a specific time in mind for Friday or should I check for availability throughout the day? Sure, let's do Friday 5 p.m. if that works. Friday at 5 p.m. is available. So I lock that in for you? Yeah, let's lock it in. All set. Your appointment has been rescheduled to Friday at 5 p.m. The target dial team will reach out to confirm. Let me know if there's anything else you need. No, nope, that's all good. Thank you. And so now you can see your 30-minute meeting has been rescheduled with the new time. If we look on the calendar, now there's no longer any meeting on Thursday. It has since then been rescheduled to Friday. So super powerful, but honestly, a very simple automation to set up. And we're going to be running through how you can set it up, what endpoints you need to be hitting. And if you are looking to just download this and get started right away, I'm going to drop it in the community. You can see here we're 655 members going strong. We're continuously growing. And you can just import this blueprint by coming in here, clicking here, and going import blueprint. So first, you're going to have to make this custom function. It's going to be called reschedule. You can see here that we need to get the requested time slot and the email of the user and then we're making them both required so that's all i'm saying right here so you can just go ahead pause this and copy paste it in then we are pointing it to this specific endpoint so i just came in to make we're going to create a new webhook and we're going to copy that address to clipboard and then hop back in here and paste that in here and once we have that we are good. And then I set up a really simple two state flow just to demonstrate how this would be done. Obviously, you can go ahead and add to this, but you can see I really just wrote greet the user transition to reschedule, reschedule state if asked to reschedule. The edge is that the user wants to reschedule. And then in this reschedule state, we're first asking for the user for their email. We're repeating the email back to the user to make them confirm it's correct. Once it's confirmed, we're going to ask for when they would like to reschedule to. Then we're going to run the check availability tool to make sure that the slot is available, confirm it with the user, and then run the reschedule tool using the available confirmed time slot. And so the two endpoints that we're going to be hitting here is the bookings endpoint. So first we're getting all the bookings. And so you're going to put in this URL. You're going to have to put in your API token from cal.com and two headers. The first header is going to be called authorization the value is going to be set to bearer with your API token. Then you're going to have this second header, which is the Cal API version 2024.08.13. So make sure that's set. And then in the query string, if I just pull up the bookings endpoint, you can see we can filter the bookings by the attendee's email. That's why we're asking for the attendee's email. And we're only looking at upcoming appointments because if an up appointment's in the past and this person's already booked with us, like that wouldn't happen, right? No, no one would want to reschedule an appointment that's already passed. So we are just looking at upcoming appointments and we're filtering by the attendee email. So first we need to get some data in here. So I would suggest just right clicking, hitting run this module only, hopping into retail and testing your LLM and just saying like, hi, I want to reschedule. And then it's going to ask for your email. So share your email and it's going to ask for the date, right? So just give it a random date. Now in the background right now, it is currently checking the availability. So there you could go. Now it's gone and it's triggered that webhook. So now you can get that, those arguments in there, which is the requested time slot and the email, which are the values that you need. So now you can come back in to get bookings and drop in your argument that was just passed through here. So you can see right here, you can drop in the email. Go ahead, hit save. So now it's going to filter all the bookings just by your email. And then after that, we are hitting the reschedule endpoint. So go ahead, copy this in. And then you're going to replace in between bookings and reschedule. 
with the data UID. So you'll just expand this and we're getting the user ID. So if I were to run this module only, we can put in my email just like that. We'll hit OK. Now you can see we get a status code 200, pull back that specific meeting because we have data. And now if we come into the bookings and you expand data, you'll see this UID. So we want to grab that. Then it's a post request. Same thing, the Cal API version header is going to be in there. And then the only parameter that we need is the new start time, which is the requested time slot from the first step. And then from there, we're just going to pass back a webhook response saying that the meeting was successfully rescheduled. Now, one thing you can do is you can add a route right here. And we could say, if you want to make it a little bit more complex, let's say that the user didn't exist, right? So let's say I gave it something that I knew wouldn't be in there. You can see that the data in the array is empty. So now we can say data does not exist. I'm pretty sure this is going to work. You can add a webhook. And in that webhook response, we could say no reservation exists under this email, right? We could say, are you sure you didn't make the reservation under another email because we don't have anything here? So it does look that Whenever there is no booking, the, the file size is 30. Now that might change. So I don't know if that's the best approach, but we could set that the file size is less than or equal to 30 for the no email. And then for email exists, we could say greater than or equal to 30. That's one method. Another method is we could just say, if we look at this example in data, you know, uh, event type ID exists because if an event type ID exists, then we know that that works. So to do that, so you can see it ran through here. And now under here, we can switch this to data event type ID. We could just say data event type ID exists and then copy that and do the same here. Does not exist. We'll hit save. And now we should be able to try it. So now we could see we just tried it came down the wrong path, right? Because event type ID does not exist. And now if we try with the proper email, we should see that it comes down the right path. There we go. Email exists. Now it's going to reschedule and then pass that information back to the webhook. Boom, our appointment's been successfully rescheduled. And so now you have the ability to determine if the email exists, if it doesn't exist, instead of returning back the same message every single time of this meeting was successfully rescheduled. And so super simple automation here, but one that's extremely powerful. And so if you did get value out of this, I would Really appreciate if you dropped a subscribe. It's free, helps support the channel, and allows me to keep making videos like this. And I hope to see you inside No Code Nation, contributing and helping our team win. And with that being said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.